I've recently been experimenting with gravity systems. The guiding principle is that every particle exerts a force on every other particle proportional to the inverse square of the distance between. A very simple implementation may look something like this, where we iterate through each possible pairing and compute the equal but opposite force that each particle exerts on the other. This has a big O complexity of n squared, meaning the number of particle interactions to compute is proportional to the number of particles in the simulation squared. So this may work well for simulations with a few hundred or perhaps even a thousand particles. But what if we want much, much more? This is not at all a tutorial. I'm just messing around and certainly making plenty of mistakes. If you have any feedback or cool ideas, please leave a comment below. So the basic idea is that rather than compare particle to particle interactions, I accumulate the particle masses on a grid, and then I compare the grid cell to grid cell interactions instead. Then by sampling the grid, I can get the acceleration due to gravity acting on each particle at its current location. However, for a high resolution grid, checking each grid cell with every other grid cell would still be too many interactions to check in real time. So I create multiple grids of various sizes, where each subsequent grid is a downsampling of the previous. For each grid cell, interactions are only computed with its neighbors within the surrounding 11 by 11 region. Then the acceleration due to gravity acting on each particle becomes a combination of the samples from each level of detail. This way, I can get more accurate gravitational forces from nearby particles by using the higher resolution grid, but also not ignore the gravitational interactions between faraway particles, albeit at a much coarser approximation. One thing I've been experimenting with is rather than calculate the force of the gravitational field for each grid cell, is to instead apply a horizontal blur followed by a vertical blur to the accumulated mass field. This method requires only n plus n samples per grid cell, opposed to n squared samples. To calculate the acceleration acting on each particle then, I instead sample the gradient of the grid, so the grid cell is directly above, below, left and right of the particle. This gives behavior that appears fairly realistic, despite not being faithful to Newton's equations. All of this can be very efficiently implemented using the Vulkan API. A grid is represented by an image with each grid cell corresponding to a pixel. For the highest level of detail grid, LOD0, I simply render every particle in the scene. Particles smaller than a single pixel can be rendered as a point while larger objects can get rendered using typical triangle rasterization. Usually, you would store an RGB color value for each pixel. Instead though, each pixel holds a single floating point value that accumulates the mass of every particle fragment that falls within its bounds. This is done by using an image with the format VK format R32S float. Each subsequent level of detail is then created by just downsampling the previous. Finally, each LOD image is post-processed by applying a horizontal blur effect, followed by a vertical blur. So this is only my first attempt and the implementation is not without its issues. Objects tend to get locked together. I think this is because gravitational forces for particles within the same pixel should approach infinity as the distance between particles approaches zero. But for now, those forces aren't being properly accounted for. This has an overall dampening effect on the simulation. It's kind of as if the particles are colliding and losing energy. Or it may be that blurring the accumulated mass grid and using the gradient as I'm doing so just is a fundamentally flawed approach. I really don't know. Additionally, large collections of points moving across the screen sometimes seem to hit an invisible boundary. I think these Gravitational fixed points, as I like to call them, occur because grids of lower level of detail always accumulate the same pixels. This results in a consistent approximation error that accumulates each frame. 
I may be able to fix this issue by increasing the pixel dimensions of each subsequent level of detail by one, and then using a random sub-pixel offset between it and the previous level that changes frame to frame. So then this way, the gravitational error due to the coarse grid will be averaged out over time, hopefully resulting in less visually noticeable inconsistencies. Finally, this also works much better on many small particles. Even with a pretty high resolution grid, it's too coarse for smooth, stable orbits to form, since forces are dampened and the system doesn't maintain its kinetic energy. One thing that might be worth trying is to split the simulation. So, forces between large objects are computed using the direct method of iterating over each pairing, and then combined with this simulation method to get the small particle interactions. Anyway, this is something I might come back to in the future. I'm just happy at this point I was able to get something visually appealing. Now, I think I should just stop talking and show the results. Thanks for watching and enjoy. Cheers.